Okay, I want to show you how I'm using uh, basically a conventional 18. Here's an 18 that you would uh, see go out the door today. There's no bobbin up there. We've switched from the bobbin to a fixed choke. And there's no tuning capacitor on the left of the L2 or the choke. But there's basically what goes out the door. And uh, everything is there that's present here. And let me get, zoom down in here a ways. The only major difference is on this particular normal 18 is the tuning LED is between the two diodes that would normally live down here. That changes the field distribution across the board somewhat, but it's not really a factor in what we're doing today. It does have the optional tuning capacitor, although it's not being used. You can see that the L3 is connected here directly to the collector, uh, which in this case you're going to see in a minute is not used. Uh, here's the tuning capacitor, the bridging capacitor, and what you're going to see is that if I try tuning this capacitor, it makes no difference. The reason for that is we're tuning down into that natural range, that natural group of frequencies, which is down in the 13 megahertz region, and we're using all of the capacity of both in parallel, and the significance of that small variation in that tuning cap doesn't really show up in our output. And here we have in the board that I was using earlier, I have 1N4148 over here for the protection diode where the normal uh, 18s will come with a 1N4001 or a 1N4007 there. But other than that, this is really an 18 with the bobbin coil. And the secret to make it work, well part of the secret to make it work, is let me pull this transistor out. When you put the transistor back in the socket, you want to bend the emitter lead back or either forward so it does not go into the socket. Let me go ahead and plug it back in here and then I'll be a little more precise on that. As I move in here, I'm obviously changing something here. But what I have is the collector base junction in use, and I'm not using the emitter junction. What's going on here? My connection's getting weird on my board. And I'm not using the emitter of the transistor. It's just sitting over here on the back. So you want to be sure you don't use the emitter connection. You're only going to be using the collector base junction. And that pretty much, as you see when I plugged it in, took it back out, that pretty much said to A, work or don't work. And you see that uh, in order to get this to work, you're going to have to play with both the mass that's going into the plus power rail, and you're going to have to adjust the length of the pigtail off of the L3, which I've done here with this white wire and clip. That's just not to clip onto things. That was to get everything tuned down into that correct range. And what I did do here also, I wanted to see what would happen. I took this small beaker of water and I stuck my single diode down in there. And I don't have anything connected to this foil, which I normally would to excite that diode. I was hoping that the field energy around the L3 here would be enough to, to maybe cause a little bit of electrolysis. But the way it's turning out, uh, that's been running for quite some time, and that doesn't seem to be going to happen for us. What I've done here, the board that I showed in 1 and 2, is, as you see, it does not have the 1 meg resistor in it, which is the base resistor, and the tuning capacitor is not there, and I've put a larger bridging capacitor basically into it to get me down into that natural range. And instead of a transistor, I'm using a 1N4148. Also, I'm using a 1N4148 in place of the protection diode. Now, the 1N4148 will work probably just as good as the MPS-06 using the collector base junction, although I do prefer the transistor. But if you 
If you don't have the transistor and you have a 140, 148, go ahead and try that. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take and wind the added inductance that was added by this bobbin to bring it into range onto a new L3 so that I can have just the one bobbin as exists here and take and still have the tuning capacitor removed or else I may add one with a larger range to it. I'm not sure yet. But you're going to have to have the test equipment to find out if you really have the natural group present, what its intensity is, and you're going to have to be able to watch the effects on the board via spectrum analyzer or something on that order so you can see the harmonics appear as you start tuning this whole system into that natural group frequency range. You'll start seeing the appearance of a Z-series when this goes into operation. If you don't see anything occurring and you don't have the sensitivity to see it, you're probably never going to get this to work. I mean, it's just, it's a given here. It's just not going to happen because you're shooting in the dark with too many variables. And until this is totally pinned down to where we can say, okay, here it is. It'll work. Like we do the 18s, I rather doubt that there's going to be a number of successes, and I would not uh, expect anyone to try to replicate this unless it's a person that uh, has worked closely with me in the past and is working at this time on this. And as I said in the uh, warning video prior to this, please be extremely careful because obviously you can cost yourself a bit of money by blowing these white LEDs. They're not all that cheap. And you can, if you have a large capacitor on here, or even if it's not a large one, you can get a pretty good little bite out of it that will cause you to jerk your hand away. But you get a large capacitor on there and you're going to get one heck of a DC jolt off of it. So really, when it's in tuning, be damn careful, folks. Uh, you get this working. It's just like you've got a power supply sitting there in front of you, and it's going to bite.